So I'm joined now by Paul Dunstall from Queen's University Belfast, who's just been giving a talk about peculiar objects as part of the VLT flame survey. So can you tell us a little bit about the region of the sky that you were looking at and what particular objects that you were you were searching for? Okay, okay. Um, well, our survey is based in the LMC, so it's the Large Magellanic Cloud, which is one of the local group galaxies. And in particular, there's a region, uh, it's a cluster called 30 Doradus. So 30 Doradus, it's a star forming region, and there's hundreds and hundreds of O-type stars and B-type stars. So my idea was, or my, my project was to look at the B-type stars of the of 30 Doradus region and look for any sort of binary stars there, find out how many there are, if, how many singular stars there are. And then as a side project to that, I came across unusual objects that caught my interest and I just wanted to pursue them further. So what type of unusual objects are out there? Okay, well, uh, the most unusual that I found uh, is uh, what's called a B bracketing super giant. So I'd never came across these before and this was brand new territory for me. I just, I just saw the spectrum and was like, what is this? Brought it to my supervisor. He was like, I don't know what that is either. So, so basically what we determined was a, a B bracketing super giant is a, it's a massive star that has a, a lot of dust and uh, gas around it from being excreted. But what was even more peculiar about this object was that it exists in a binary system. So now there's two objects and there's just a whole host of things going on that just was so confusing at the time. So are these two stars interacting with each other? Yep, yep that's the thought. Um, we seem to have sort of a massive star, uh, the massive supergiant, and uh, an even a possibly more massive star. But we can't see it because it's veiled by all this dust and gas. So there's a circumstellar circumstellar disk around this secondary and we can't really see we can see some evidence for it but we, we're not sure because there's just too much stuff going on there. And and there's no other examples of this type of object anywhere else that you know? Not of? that I've found. I mean we have we have evidence of uh, B type super giants or B bracket E super giants and we have evidence of interacting binaries. But this seems to be the first time we've got them together. So it's sort of it was the first time for me just finding these objects and it seems to be the first time discovering this very, very unique system. Yeah, and what do you think that might say about sort of the way different stars evolve? It could say a whole host of things. I mean we can look at it and, and and just see so many different ways that binary stars can interact with each other. I mean, we have we have other evidence of binary stars that exist their whole lives almost separate. They're in an orbit, but they're so wide apart and they don't interact. But the fact that these these systems seem to be spewing matter everywhere and constantly t uh, creating matter onto each other, and, and it's just it's so hard to tell what's going on there. But there's so much going on there, so much to tell us. And as well as binary stars, are there any other peculiar objects in this particular region? Um, we do have more peculiar objects. Uh, there's at least two more that I found. They are again binary stars, uh, but they're binary stars that shouldn't exist. It's again, it's super giants, but it's uh, blue super giants shouldn't really exist in a binary system. Uh, sorry, a, a short period binary system. But we did seem to detect two or three of these objects. And when I first mentioned this to people, they were like, "No, no, that can't exist." I'm like, "But I've got them." You know. So it, it's there's more objects there, and I'm still finding more objects. I think I've just had a meeting of another two objects that popped up. So there's still so more to come. It sounds like you've got your work cut out for a few more years. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm still going. I'm still going. I've still got the whole project to do. I'm just keep getting sidetracked. So <laughs> there's a lot still to do. Yeah. And the main sort of purpose of the survey originally, uh, are you going to come back? to that and see how these objects all fit together? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's what I really need to do. I need to step back and I go back to the main project and, and sort of determine how many binary stars we've got and, and just the, the general sample of main sequence stars. But there'll always be that interest. There'll always be these other objects on the outliers that I just really want to look at because they, they get you thinking and they spark sort of ideas amongst other people and it's, it's brilliant. <laughs>